Hi, my name is Michelle Chapman uh, at Keto is Life, and I have disordered eating. Today, because of a friend's suggestion, I will speak on the topic of eating and fasting in our ketogenic way of life. Please consider liking and subscribing if this video touches you. Subscribing allows my new content to get to you as soon as possible. Firstly, let me be clear. I am not a doctor or a nurse or a therapist. I'm a certified clinical laboratory scientist with a master's degree in hematology. I have been trained as a medical assistant and I have two uh, medically challenged children. Personally, I've battled obesity and disordered eating my entire life. So 10 years ago, with diabetes looming over me, I decided to have gastric bypass surgery. The surgery restricted my eating and gave me a negative feedback loop um, that gave me a negative consequence like dumping. Dumping syndrome um, makes you very ill. This was integral in my process uh, because I was a binge eater, I was an emotional eater, I was a boredom eater, I was a celebration eater, and I was occasionally bulimic. With that being said, I can empathize with anyone dealing with these issues on a daily basis. It can be soul crushing and is typically associated with, at least in my case, depression and anxiety um, and OCD. So my journey, which took me about eight years to realize that carbs were my enemy. So starting a strict keto diet uh, brought me to where I am today. I'm not perfect, I'm not fixed, but exponentially I'm better health-wise than I was. So, do you have a food addiction that would manifest itself in, do you feel insecure about where your next meal is going to come from? Do you feel like you need to always take food with you everywhere you go, just in case? Because the fear of being hungry or not having something to eat scares you. Um, do you plan what you're going to eat at your next meal while you're eating a meal? These are all signs of food addiction. And the food, food addiction is a lot like, let me give you a little parallel. I am also a recovering alcoholic. When I was an alcoholic, when I was actively drinking, that was my day. I was planning where my next drink would come from. I was terrified if I thought I wasn't going to be able to get something. And I would obsess all day about when can I drink again? Where am I going to get it? Who's getting in my way of getting what I need? It completely controlled my life and made my life unmanageable. So food addiction is a lot like that. There is one big difference. Of course, you need food to survive. You don't need alcohol to survive. So food addiction is actually harder for me to face because I have to have it. Um, I have to do some real serious self-talk and remind myself that if I miss a meal, it's it's going to be okay. If I'm if I get hungry, it's going to be fine. I I I can manage without food. 
I don't need to carry around a bag of food with me all the time. It took time. So the real crux of this video is bulimia, anorexia, binge eating disorder, or any dysfunctional eating pattern. Okay, I believe, I firmly believe that treatment by a physician is necessary if you have one of these. It, it, they are very hard and I completely understand. And also obesity can be the result of many of these issues and a doctor's going to have to be consulted before you dramatically change your diet in any way, especially if you're taking meds. Because uh, your meds, I mean, if your doctor decides that you can go keto or you can um, do fasting in whatever capacity, uh, you know, your meds will have to change over time. So, not only do I suffer from dysfunctional eating, but I also have a child who suffers as well. So I'm really aware of how eating disorders can affect individuals and I would never recommend starting keto or fasting specifically to control these problems. And I definitely I definitely want to apologize to anyone who's ever been triggered or influenced in any negative manner by any of my videos. I take mental health very seriously. In this house, we've lived through bulimia, binge eating, self-harm, and suicidal ideation. So, I've taken classes in um, dialectical behavior therapy and mental health first aid. My life's goal is focused on helping those in need, especially underserved or marginalized populations, but seriously, anybody who needs help. That is the way my life turned out. So I would never intentionally harm anyone or suggest anything that would that I thought would cause harm to anyone. So with all of that said, <laughs> let's talk about keto. So my keto, the keto is life keto, focuses on a whole person approach. We are all dynamic, moving, growing, changing people with sorry, with completely different objectives and issues that plague us all. Um, there are basic guidelines to keto, but you are going to decide how you are going to work your plan. Um, intermittent fasting is not required. It's a natural progression once you become fat adapted. That takes a few months. You know, usually in most people it takes a few months. Once it happens, your hunger disappears. And you can go longer in between your feedings. Uh, it shouldn't be forced. It should never be forced. You shouldn't force yourself to intermittently fast. So, extended fasting, like I just did, Okay, I did 48 hours, which for me is fairly normal. 48 hour fast for me, but I am fat adapted. 
and I have been for quite a while. Extended fasting can be done once you're fat adapted. The benefits of this are autophagy, which is cellular cleansing, um, mental clarity. I mean, I have a lot of reasons personally that I do it. And I can do it fairly easy. Some people use it to break weight loss stalls. Uh, it may or may not work. In some people it does. You should always listen to your body. And I think once you've done keto for a while, and you can understand how your body works and is functioning on keto, then you get a better sense of whether you want to pursue fasting or not. It's not required. Fasting is never required. It's Some people can live their whole lives and never fast. It's not required. If you choose to fast, though, I would say consult your doctor before you start. And start slow. Start by doing intermittent fasting and try 16-8 or 18-6 or 12-12 and 12, or whatever fasting suits your needs and your body. So um, there are a lot of different kinds of fasts too. There's fat fasting, there's, I mean, people make up different scenarios for fasting all the time. So you can just Google fasting and it'll show you a bunch of different kinds of fasting. But let me reiterate that keto Intermittent fasting or just extended fasting are great tools, but you should discuss with your doctor first uh, because they're, especially if you're on meds or you're diabetic. So please do that for me. You know, we all have our own personal reasons for either following keto or fasting. Um, some people are against fasting. You know, I get a lot of negative comments as well as positive. Um, you know, how do you feel about fasting? Do you think it brings on disordered eating? Because I, I, I know quite a few people with, the dis, with disordered eating in my life. And fasting is not something I would say that brings out their disorder. In fact, many of them have never even considered it or wouldn't consider it. But what do you think? I mean, I, I'm always open. I'm a very open-minded person. So if you all think differently, um, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, do you think that keto and, and intermittent fasting can help with disordered eating? I know in my situation... In my personal experience, it's helped me with a lot of my issues. But I was a binge eater, and keto gives me a structure and took away all that craving for sugar and really allows me to control the type of eating I want to do. Do you think it can help? Um, let me know in the comments, because I really am interested. You know, I, I want to help people. That is, that is really my, going to be my life's work the rest of my life. I, I want to help people. So, you know, it, it's important to me to know what people think. So I really value your input. Anyway, thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe, um, and I'm always uh, open to comments. Leave them below, and uh, I will talk to y'all later. Okay, bye.